Hi, I'm Chance Finucan, Chief Investment Officer at Oxbow Advisors. Here is what we're paying attention to heading into the second half of the year. Stocks connected to the artificial intelligence trend have quadrupled in less than two years. Their price to sales ratio is now an astronomical 18 times. That's triple the NASDAQ 100 and six times the S&P 500. A lot of good news is priced into these stocks valuations for the rest of the decade. It's been an amazing run for these stocks but none of them screen as undervalued or fairly valued in our estimation. The tech sector is an area where we are being mindful of how we buy into our clients' stock portfolios. Tech stocks as a group traded a price to earnings ratio greater than 30 times. That's higher than when everyone thought tech stocks were expensive in 2021 before a 33% decline in the XLK tech stock ETF. And it's at a valuation only previously seen during the dot-com bubble of the late 1990s and early 2000s. At 20 to 25 times earnings, there are a lot more opportunities in tech. But above 30 times, there is less to choose from, and we are more targeted about what we are willing to buy in the sector. Within tech, it's semiconductor companies that are driving the performance. Tech has four major sub-industries, semiconductors, software, hardware, and IT services. One may think all of tech is moving higher this year, but it's only semiconductors that have appreciated year to date. In fact, they have appreciated by more than 50% in 2024. Software, hardware, and IT services are trading down year to date. That makes these industries look more attractive relative to semiconductors if we want to add more tech exposure into the long-term growth stock strategy. If we had to choose between software or semiconductor stocks starting today, we would choose software. One key reason for that is their free cash flow margins are holding steady. Semiconductor stocks have been outstanding performers for two decades because they have high free cash flow margins, good long-term growth, and usually trade at cheaper valuations than the market. What's changed today is the semiconductor stocks are no longer cheaper than the market. They are significantly more expensive, so an investor is now paying up for that growth potential. And as shown on this chart, their free cash flow margins have fallen because CapEx spending has boomed to try to meet expected demand for semiconductor chips supporting the AI trend. This CapEx could pay off over the next decade, but historically, it's risky betting on semiconductors when they are in a heavy investment phase. In the meantime, software stocks are only fairly valued, but their free cash flow margins are intact. We've made sure clients with stock accounts own some Adobe and ServiceNow when those stocks pull back. These are long-term positions we have owned for four years or more and still like the long-term outlook. Broadly speaking, the valuation of the major stock indices remains high and suggests lower expected returns over the next five years. The S&P 500 price to earnings ratio is back above 21 times, similar to the dot-com bubble and the market top in 2021. This means any future appreciation in stocks must come from earnings growth. The benefit from multiple expansion is gone. A better way to frame this is comparing the valuation of the S&P 500 versus the equal weighted version of the index. Twice in the past, the high value that investors were willing to pay for the largest stocks in the S&P 500 drove the index valuation far above the valuation for the equal weighted index. In the prior two cases, the valuation of the S&P 500 eventually fell back in line with the equal weighted one. We think the current case will play out in a similar way. Our focus in this environment is buying companies with better than average valuation, low capital expenditure needs, and good stable earnings quality. We think companies with this profile will hold up much better if and when the overall index falls back to the pack. It's worth noting that this has been a stagnant two and a half year period for the average large cap stock. At the end of 2021, even the equal weighted S&P 500 traded at 20 times earnings. Because of that high valuation as a starting point, the average stock has hardly appreciated in two and a half years. This does provide some opportunities to buy shares of solid businesses with consistent cash flow and trading at reasonable prices. The key is not overpaying and trying to keep potential downside below 20% in any new purchases. In the second quarter, we identified some new buys in healthcare, utilities, and online travel agencies. If the average stock hasn't gone up in recent years, then what's been the big winner over the past decade? Large cap growth. This chart is astounding. It's rare to see such a large section of the stock market appreciate at a 16% annual rate for a decade. 
When one area has performed so well, it's important to remember this performance is unlikely to repeat for the next decade. As a result, diversifying across more styles of the stock market is likely to lead to better future returns. Vanguard is known for presenting reasonable forecasts to its clients about what to expect for the next 10 years. Their latest update presents an interesting picture. Because U.S. stocks have appreciated by so much over the past 15 years, projected 10-year annual returns for stocks of only about 3 to 6% is not too different from their projection for bonds and cash. We agree with this outlook that a balanced, flexible approach will generate the best risk-adjusted returns for investors over the next decade. In summary, AI and semiconductor stocks have run ahead of their fair values. Dipping your toes into the tech sector should be quite targeted at this stage. The high overall valuation for the S&P 500 and other major stock indices suggests lower expected returns in the years ahead. However, because the average stock in the S&P 500 has hardly moved in two and a half years, it is possible to find some new buys in solid businesses with good cash flow and reasonable valuations. Because of the fantastic growth in the large cap growth space over the past decade, we think it's best to make sure you diversify across styles of stocks and asset classes looking out to the next 10 years. If you have any questions about this, feel free to contact us. We provide the information that we think is most valuable to investors. If you'd like to follow our work more closely, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.